Are we got any anesthesiologists here today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what are your thoughts about that? Oops. I mean, our group, I'm, I'm from Walmart, we, if it's a diabetic patient, we check with it's a diabetic patient. Yeah, hourly, yeah. I, I think. So that's kind of a strange. It's a strange approach. I think it is too. And you know what? We when we checked her on, a lot of the hospitals didn't have glucometers in the operating room, and so they weren't able to. Do, all they could do is draw a blood specimen, send it to the lab, and it takes forever to get that back, and you can't really act on it. And then a lot of the hospitals didn't have an IV infusion protocol for insulin either. That's uh, IV uh, insulin infusion is that's the modern standard for managing glucose. It's not sub cube insulin in the OR. So I think you know getting people to, to that level is really important. And part of the diabetic protocol was buying 25 glucometers for the OR pre-op. Yeah, there you go. Right. So I think that way I've been nice. If you make it easy for them to do the right thing, I think that should be our mantra at MSPC. Make it easy for them to do the right thing. Somebody mentioned that to me the other day, and I thought it was a really good phrase. Okay, what else we got? Yeah, Gary. If you should be aware that uh, there's a perineal dialysis fluid on the market that invalidates almost all the glucometers. Oh, is that right? So it reads maltose as glucose. It reads falsely elevated levels. So your glucometer may read 150 when in fact it's 10. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know that. Be, be aware that uh, you want to have a glucometer that uh, Okay, that's a, that's a very good point. That, another thing, Gary's comment reminds me of another thing. How many of you uh, use this um, opioid infusion device for post-operative pain control? There's, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's these little catheters that have tiny little holes, and you put them in the preperitoneal location. Yeah, the yeah, pump. Yeah, anesthetics. Yeah, I'm sorry, what, yeah, that's what I meant, anesthetics. Did you use that? Yeah, because I think there's some there's some uh, benefit to that. I, there's some pretty good data out there I've seen that, that patients certainly like a lot better, and it may be that, again, with this anesthetic infusion in that area, we may be able to decrease the wound infection. Okay, what other, we got time for one or two more questions. Any other burning questions from the group? There must be. I'm trying to think of any other. Issues. Has anybody started doing, um, per the National Patient Safety Goal, SSI patient education? Well, you sent me something this morning about yeah. that. Yeah, it's and a requirement you, right now. You, she said that I should give this to everybody, but she said it's an hour before the meeting. So, uh, so we will put that up on our MSQC website. Because I, what is it exactly? It's uh, just an FAQ on preventing SSIs that you give to your patient. It tells them to, if they're obese, lose weight. If they smoke, quit smoking 30 days prior. And take a shower. And it also gives them a little information about what the surgical team is going to do. But some of our surgeons didn't want that in there necessarily. But about antibiotics and... Yeah, well, I hope it says one thing that we sometimes screw up on is that is class one evidence that if you have another infection somewhere, yeah. you should not have an elective operation. You have a, you know, a little furuncle or something like that. It's well known that you're going to have a much higher chance of getting infection. So I think that's something that patients need to know. Because frequently the doctors will, you know, they won't ask right. that. But I think that's really important, or an abscess tooth or something like that. It, you really need to cancel that operation and do it another time. Yes, ma'am. Lisa, are you talking about the FAQ from Basic CDC? The Shade Compendium, yeah. That is an excellent, excellent document. Yeah. And we have put it on our intranet on Sunday. And we have signed a form number. So they could be replenished off the intranet. Yeah. And this is given to each patient that's going to have surgery. And it's expressed <coughs> in the nurse document. Well, we're going to take that and we're going to put it on our MSQC website. Linda, will you remind me or Laura, remind me to do that? Actually, there's an FAQ for uh, bloodstream infections, UTI, MRSA, C. diff, and SSI. You can put them all on your in-hospital website. Yeah, and um, with regard to Walt's uh, glycemic control protocol, is that on our best practices site now? If it's not, it's not, can we get it? 
whatever you do. Yeah. Oh, it'll draft. Yeah. So when you get a final draft, if you send it to us, we'll post it so everybody else can use that. Yeah. I think it might be helpful.